Welcome back to part 20 of setting up the Power Platform Centre of Excellence. In this video, we're going to, this is going to be quite a meaty one, so we might have to break it into a few segments, but we're essentially going to set up the Application Lifecycle Management Accelerator for Microsoft Power Platform. Now, this is currently in preview, so basically it's not really there to be used in a production environment, but we're still going to walk through it because I personally believe that there's going to be some form of ALM accelerator available at some point. So there's quite a few prerequisites to this one. So just to call out those, it will make use of Azure DevOps for pipelines and for source control. You can sign up to DevOps for free for up to five users. Just go to the Azure DevOps website and you'll be able to do this. You're going to need to have a user with permissions across a multitude of areas of the Microsoft Cloud stack. So they're going to need to have the ability to work with Azure AD groups, create app registrations, and grant admin consent to the app, app registrations, which we'll walk through in a moment. They'll need to be a licensed Azure DevOps user with the permission to manage pipelines, service connections, which is going to allow DevOps to interact with the Power Platform environment, repos, which is going to be the source control, and extensions, which is going to give us the Power Platform build tools. On the Microsoft Power Platform side of the fence, the user is going to need permissions to create application users and grant administrative permissions to the application user. And that will form the complete configuration for Azure DevOps to be able to interact with the Power Platform environment that we're going to want to use ALM with. There's also going to be certain connectors at play, so you'll need to ensure that any data loss prevention policies allow these connectors to work together. So just to quickly call them out, we've got Dataverse Legacy, HTTP, Power Apps for Makers, HTTP with Azure AD, and specifically access to graph.microsoft.com for the endpoint, ALM Accelerator Custom DevOps, but this that that's it, that, that's a custom connector that will come as part and parcel of the Accelerator solution and Office 365 users. Now, I'm not going to worry about that too much at the moment because it is quite vocal if a data loss prevention policy is preventing anything from working. So if it is being prevented, we can just plug that gap when we come to it. It also makes use of the creator kit. So the environment that we're setting this up in, you'll want to have imported the creator kit, which we already have here. Although having thinking about it, we probably wouldn't do this in our center of excellence. You've got Azure AD app registration. So that brings us on to our first setup item, which is the Azure AD or Azure app registration. So we're in, we're at portal.azure.com. I probably could reutilize the Power Platform service that I used as an app registration in another video series of mine that discusses ALM, because you can, of course, do this outside, but I just wanted to kind of go over all the facets of the center of excellence starter kit, and this being one of them. But for the purpose of, of this video, we'll create a new registration. We, I'll just call this PP for Power Platform ALM. And then I'll leave everything else as the defaults and click register. So the next crucial aspect of setting up an app registration is you're basically using it as a service that has permissions to various APIs, essentially. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to add a permission and we're going to do dynamic CRM. We're going to do delegated permissions. Um, we've only got this one option of, of user underscore impersonation, which we're going to add. We're going to repeat that same add a permission step. So for this one, the next one, we're looking for Power Apps Advisor. 
And for to find this one, we're going to need to select the APIs my organization uses. So with that selected, we now want to look for this Power Apps Advisor. And I'm just going to double check. I'm going to go with Delegated. And then I am going to go for the admin consent required. Not sure why there's two, if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, the next is DevOps. Uh, and this is required for connecting as per the documentation as your DevOps via the custom connector. And this can be found under Microsoft APIs or under where we were before. So let's just have a look for it. So DevOps, no, Microsoft APIs. Scroll is your DevOps. And we'll go for, well, we've only got that option and we'll click on user underscore impersonation. Although again, we might have to troubleshoot this because this is why I like to do these videos because I mean, the Microsoft documentation is good to a certain point, but then it just kind of becomes a bit wishy-washy. But anyway, we've added in at least Power Apps Advisor, Azure DevOps and Dynamic CRM. We're now going to click on Grant Admin Consent and then click Yes. And it's lit up green. The next thing we're going to want to do is, I suppose, ideally we do this by way of a certificate and but we're going to do a secret and ideally doing a secret, we would do it by way of storing that secret within an Azure Key Vault and consuming it. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to pause up whilst a, I generate a client secret and copy the value. We have now created the secret and copied the value. However, looking at documentation a bit more, I'm not entirely convinced by the Azure DevOps permission I selected. So it does advise you to go to, and you'll need to do this in a an in private browser. So it takes you to a login page. But basically, once you've signed up to Azure DevOps, go to dev.azure.com forward slash the name of your organization forward slash underscore APIs. And when doing that in an in private session, in the browser URL, copy out the client ID value then go to add a permission to your app registration in APIs my organization uses search for that client ID value which we have here and you can do it that way although looking at it going full circle it looks like it is one and the same but ju just in case that's your only means of getting to it that um trick with the underscore APIs in an in private browser session does seem to do the trick. We're now, we're now going to click on overview and also make a note of the client ID and the tenant ID for future use. Normally you would sometimes do this next step after configuring the authentication of a custom connector and once saving it, it will generate a redirect URI. But we're going to go with the documentation and this states that we can just set. So in overview, we'll click add a redirect URI. We'll add a platform, select web as the type, and we'll specify HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash global dot consent dot azure dash APIM dot net forward slash redirect and select configure. In fact, because the next step, we're going to need to use some PowerShell and I'd rather show you the PowerShell and not just my browser window with me talking through it. We're going to round up this video here and we'll continue with the next step being giving Power App management permissions to the App registration that we've just done. And um, like I say, we need to use PowerShell and it's kind of a one-time thing that we need to do. So 
will round off there. Although I'm half tempted to say, before we finish, let's actually, the next step would be to install the Azure DevOps extensions. So I do already, I do already have this within my DevOps environment, but we'll, we'll go through the motions as if we don't. So you come to dev.azure.com, we're at the organization level. We would click on organization settings. We would then click on extensions. And we this wouldn't be here if it's the first time, Power Platform Build Tools. And we would browse the marketplace, search for the Power Platform Build Tools, which I'll just do now. Select it, do the get it for free, and that will make that will make the the actions of the Power Platform Build Tools available for use within pipelines. So, like I say, we'll carry on with the giving Power App management permissions to your app in the next video. Thank you for watching.